Kam Kekyo. Kam Kekyo, also spelled Kang Gwek Eve, Khmer, Kang Kek Eve, Kang Gek Dariu, 17. November 1942, September 2, 2020, alias Comrade Dutch, Khmer, Mit Dutch, MIT Duk, or Hang Pin, was a Cambodian convicted war criminal and leader in the Khmer Rouge movement, which ruled democratic Kampuchea from 1975 to 1979. Of the government's internal security branch, Santebal, he oversaw the Tul Slang, S-21, prison camp where thousands were held for interrogation and torture, after which the vast majority of these prisoners were eventually executed. He was the first Khmer Rouge leader to be tried by the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia for the crimes of the Khmer Rouge regime, and was convicted of crimes against humanity, murder, and torture for his role during the Khmer Rouge rule of Cambodia and sentenced to 30 years imprisonment. On Candlemas Day, February 2, 2012, his sentence was extended to life imprisonment by the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia. Kong Kekyu, unlike many other Khmer Rouge cadres, did not dismiss or justify his crimes. He admitted that he had been wrong and that he had done horrible things, he said that he repented and that he had converted to Christianity. During his trial, he provided detailed accounts of what happened inside S-21 and inside the Khmer Rouge regime, although his testimony at times contained discrepancies and at the conclusion of his trial he asked to be freed. Early Years Kong Kekyu was born in Choyat village, Kampong Chin subdistrict, Kampong Tong province, to an ethnic Chinese family who migrated to Cambodia in his father's generation. A star pupil in his school, he passed his brevet d'études secondaries to premiere in 1961 at the age of 19. He finished the first half of his baccalaureate in 1962 at the Lycée Suravarman II in the town of Siem Reap. The same year he was offered a place in the prestigious Lycée Sisawath in Phnom Penh where he completed his baccalaureate in mathematics, scoring second in the entire country. From his childhood on, Kang's name was changed many times. One such occasion of name changing took place when he was 15, when his parents changed his name to Yim Chiv. As the name is important in Chinese culture, Kong therefore gave his name to his grandson, significantly adding the Chinese name, Yun, to this name. He was described by his former classmates as a bright and quiet boy who rarely smiled during his youth. Induction into the Khmer Rouge This section needs additional citations for verification. Please help improve this article by adding citations to reliable sources in this section. Unsourced material may be challenged and removed. September 2020, learn how and when to remove this template. Message In 1964, Kekyu began studying for his teaching certificate in mathematics, a subject he loved, at the Institute de Pedagogy. The institute was a cradle of activism under the directorship of Sun Sen who was later to emerge as the defense minister of the Khmer Rouge and Dutch's immediate superior. August 28, 1966, Kekyo received his teaching certificate and was posted to a lycée in Skoun, a small town in Kampong Chan province. He was a good teacher, remembered as earnest and committed by his pupils. 11. He joined the Communist Party of Kampuchea in 1967. Following the arrest of three of his students, he fled to the Khmer Rouge base in Chankar Lu district where he was accepted as a full member of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. A few months later, he was arrested and witnessed others being tortured at the Prey Sar Prison, 12, by Noradam Sihanouk's police for engaging in communist activities. He was held without trial for the next two years. In 1970, when he was released following the amnesty granted to political prisoners by Lan Nau, he joined the Khmer Rouge rebels in the Cardamom Mountains bordering Thailand. In the Maquis This section needs additional citations for verification. Please help improve this article by adding citations to reliable sources in this section. Unsourced material may be challenged and removed. September 2020, learn how and when to remove this template message.
Communist groups in France's former colonies in Indochina borrowed the French World War II expression Maquis when referring to their resistance movements in the jungles. In the zone under the control of the Khmer Rouge, Kekyu took on his nom de guerre comrade Dutch, IPA frowny face Dutch, and became a prison commandant. He was appointed the head of special security by his immediate superior Vorn Vet. In the forests of Amliang, Thbong district, Dutch set up his first prison, codenamed M13. Two years later, he also established a second prison M99 in the nearby Aoral district. Assisted by his two deputies, Man Nai, Comrade Chan, and Tang Sin Heen, Comrade Pan, Dutch began perfecting his interrogation techniques and the purging of perceived enemies from the Khmer Rouge ranks. Prisoners at these camps, mostly from the ranks of the Khmer Rouge, were routinely starved and tortured to extract real and made-up confessions. While in the Maquis, Dutch married Chim Sofel, aka Ram, a dressmaker from a nearby village. They had four children while he worked at S-21. Leading the Sante Ball and Tul Slang This section needs additional citations for verification. Please help improve this article by adding citations to reliable sources in this section. Unsourced material may be challenged and removed. September 2020, learn how and when to remove this template message. After the Khmer Rouge victory in April 1975, Dutch and his men set up prisons throughout the capital, including the infamous Tol Slang prison. Dutch's request for a transfer in May 1975 to the industrial sector of government was denied. The Tol Slang prison camp was initially headed by Enlan, aka Comrade Nath, with Dutch acting as deputy. Subsequently, Enlan was transferred and Dutch was promoted to director. By May 1976, all the prisons in Phnom Penh were consolidated and relocated to Tol Slang. Prisons like Tul Slang were created to cleanse the population of suspected enemies of the revolution. In Tul Slang, Dutch ordered the execution of prisoners after their interrogation was completed. For example, on a list containing the names of 17 prisoners, 8 teenagers and 9 children, he wrote the order, smash them to pieces. On a longer list of detainees, his annotation reads, smash, 115, keep, 44 persons. The text below this annotation reads, Comrade Dutch proposed to anchor, anchor agreed. On a list of 20 female detainees, Dutch wrote annotations for each of them, ordering, take away for execution, keep for interrogation, or medical experiment. At least 100 detainees died after having all of their blood drawn for. Transfusions for wounded soldiers. Surgical operations were also performed on detainees in order to train medical staff. Dutch impressed his superiors with his work and was appointed the head of Democratic Kampuchea's dreaded special branch, the Santebal. As the party purges increased toward the end of the Democratic Kampuchea period, more people were brought to Dutch, including former colleagues, among them his predecessor at Tol Slang, in Lan. Throughout this period, Dutch built up a large archive of prison records, mug shots, and extracted confessions. On January 6, 1979, he was ordered by his superior to kill the remaining prisoners. The next day, Dutch was among the last Khmer Rouge cadres to flee Phnom Penh after it fell to the Vietnamese army. Though he was unable to destroy much of the prison's extensive documents, he saw to the execution of several surviving prisoners before he fled the city. After the fall, Dutch reached the border of Thailand in May 1979. Details of his whereabouts at this time remain unclear. It is believed that he went to the forests of Samlap where he was reunited with his family. Dutch was demoted by brother number two, Nguyen Chia, for having failed to destroy the documents at Tol Slang. At the border, he learned to speak Thai and taught himself English. He later taught English and mathematics at a refugee camp in Borai just inside Thailand. In June 1986, Dutch was sent to China to teach as a Khmer language expert at the Beijing Foreign Language Institute. He returned to the Thai-Cambodian border a year later and changed his name to Hang Pin. 
He worked as a senior bureaucrat just inside the Cambodian border at Pol Pot Secretariat at Camp 505. Shortly after the Paris Agreement in October 1991, he moved with his family to the small isolated village of Gom close to the Thai border. Here he purchased some land and began teaching in the local school. He was known as a good teacher, but one with a fiery temper. In 1995, Dutch's wife was killed under mysterious circumstances in an attack on his home. Dutch was the only witness and suspected Pol Pot of instigating it. He sold all his possessions, secured a transfer to Svei Czech College, and moved there with his children. Shortly after his wife's murder, Dutch began attending the prayer meetings of the Golden West Cambodian Christian Church held in Batambang by Christopher Lapel, an evangelical Khmer American. Dutch was baptized by Lapel and eventually became a lay pastor. Lapel was later to observe that although he did not know Dutch's real identity at the time, there were clues. For example, before his conversion, Dutch had said to Lapel that he had done a lot of bad things in his life. Later, Dutch was to say, I don't know if my brothers and sisters can forgive the sins I've committed against the people. Discovery Soon after his identity was discovered, Dutch accepted a transfer to Samlout as Director of Education. When fighting broke out in 1996 following the split of the Khmer Rouge and the coup to oust Prince Ranarit in 1997, he fled with his family to the Ban Ma Muang camp just inside Thailand. At the camp, he worked for the American Refugee Committee as the Community Health Supervisor. In late 1998, he returned to Cambodia when fighting subsided. He settled in the village of Andau Hep in Ratanak Mondal and worked closely with World Vision International, the Christian Relief Agency. The photojournalist Nick Dunlop tracked Dutch down in Samlout. In 1999, Nate Thayer, who had previously interviewed Pol Pot and Tom Ock, and Dunlop interviewed Dutch for the Far Eastern Economic Review. Dutch surrendered to the authorities in Phnom Penh following the publication of this interview. Trial on July 31, 2007, Dutch was formally charged with war crimes and crimes against humanity and detained by Cambodia's United Nations-backed extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia. Dutch, represented by Cambodian lawyer Car Savath and French lawyer Francois Roux, appealed against his provisional detention by the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia based on the more than eight years he spent without trial in Cambodian military detention. The appeal was unsuccessful and on August 14, 2008, the tribunal issued its indictment after completing their investigation of Dutch. In February 2008, as part of the judicial process, Dutch was taken to Tol Slang Prison, the scene of his crimes. He reportedly collapsed in tears after stating, I ask for your forgiveness, I know that you cannot forgive me, but I ask you to leave me the hope that you might. On February 16, 2009, the UN supervised trial of Dutch began at a Phnom Penh court. Dutch was prosecuted by international co-prosecutors William Smith and Anis Ahmed and was charged with personally overseeing the systematic torture of more than 15,000 prisoners. The presiding judge of the case was Nil Nan. Dutch was tried by a panel of five judges, three Cambodian, one French, and one New Zealander according to a 2003 pact between Cambodia and the United Nations establishing the tribunal. On March 31, 2009, Dutch, in a statement in front of the Cambodia Tribunal, accepted responsibility for torturing and executing thousands of inmates, expressed heartfelt sorrow for his crimes and vowed to cooperate fully with the tribunal. Dutch surprised the tribunal on November 27, 2009 with a plea to be released. In his final statement before the tribunal he acknowledged his involvement in Khmer Rouge era crimes, including the execution of more than 12,000 Tol Slang prisoners, but said they were committed by a criminal party. Dutch also noted that he had served more than 10 years in detention, and stressed that he had been fully cooperative with the tribunal. There were also conflicting closing arguments from Dutch's defense team. His Cambodian lawyer, Carr Savath demanded his client's acquittal and release, while his international counterpart, Francois Roux pressed judges to hand down a lenient sentence. 
At the conclusion of the trial, prosecutors asked that Dutch be given 40 years in prison if convicted. On July 26, 2010, Dutch was found guilty of crimes against humanity, torture, and murder. He was sentenced to 35 years imprisonment, with a pre-trial detention credit of 11 years being applied to his sentence and an additional controversial five-year deduction because his period of pre-trial detention exceeded the maximum allowed under Cambodian law. On 3rd February 2012, an upper court UN war crimes tribunal rejected his appeal and extended his sentence to life imprisonment because of his shocking and heinous crimes. The ruling was final with no other chance for appeal. On October 20, 2018, he was hospitalized in serious condition. Death After serving 10 years in prison, on September 2, 2020, Dutch died at the age of 77 at the Khmer Soviet Friendship Hospital of Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. Due to the complicated situation of COVID-19 in Cambodia, he was quickly cremated on the same day in Phnom Penh, without a Buddhist funeral.